Avian influenza, commonly called bird flu, is a viral infection that spreads in birds, cows and other animals, and it can sometimes spread to people and people who work with poultry, waterfowl and dairy cows are at most risk. If you're watching this video at the end of 2024, there is a current bird flu outbreak in the US. So first of all, what exactly is bird flu? Well, the scientific name for bird flu is avian influenza, and it's an infection from a type of influenza virus that usually spreads in birds and other animals. Now, like I mentioned in the introduction, sometimes humans can get bird flu from infected animals, and it's this that we're going to be concentrating on in this video. Whilst it's normally extremely rare for it to spread from person to person, it can make people very ill if they get it. Now, most commonly, you might hear about bird flu when there's an outbreak affecting large numbers of birds or other animals, such as at the end of 2024 in the USA. This is concerning because it increases the risk of human infection and it can affect wildlife and can reduce the food supply. So now we know what it is, well, what are the different types of bird flu? Well, it's important to know there are many subtypes of bird flu. There are several different subtypes that have spread to humans in the past. The most common ones are influenza H5N1 and H7N9. Now, the types of proteins on the surface of the virus are determining the names of these subtypes. Now, in terms of symptoms of bird flu, two of the most common symptoms are feeling short of breath as well as conjunctivitis, which is where you get pink or red looking eyes. Other symptoms can include a severe sore throat, a fever, a cough, a stuffy or runny nose, nausea and vomiting, fatigue, muscle aches, as well as diarrhea or loose poo. Bird flu symptoms are sometimes mild, but some people develop severe respiratory complications, and this is why doctors worry about it. Now, in terms of the severe illness, complications can include pneumonia, acute respiratory distress, bacterial infections, sepsis, which is a very severe infection, brain swelling like meningoencephalitis, as well as respiratory failure. So let's take a look at how bird flu spreads. Well, humans can get bird flu if they come into contact with an infected animal's body fluid, like spit, milk, respiratory droplets, or poo. You can breathe it in from small dust particles in animal habitats, or you can get it into your eyes, nose, or mouth after touching body fluids. To bust some myths, you don't get bird flu from eating properly cooked poultry or eggs, or from drinking pasteurized milk. And any flocks that are known to have avian flu virus are immediately taken out of the human food supply. Our normal seasonal flu, so not bird flu, is spread through the air when infected people cough and sneeze. Now, avian influenza or bird flu is different. Current studies suggest that H5N1 does not spread well through the air. This makes it different from the typical human flu and it's one of several reasons why the risk of a bird flu pandemic remains low. Now, almost all of the human cases of H5N1 to date in the most recent outbreak in the USA have been in people with high exposure to infected or dead animals, such as workers on dairy or poultry farms. Now, these individuals were likely infected after getting the virus onto their hands and rubbing their eyes or by breathing in high quantities of the virus. Most wild animals contract the virus by eating infected or dead birds, and we believe that avian influenza can be spread amongst dairy cattle through the milking process in commercial dairies. Now, this means that people who work with poultry, waterfowl like ducks or geese, and dairy cows are at the highest risk for bird flu. Now, in terms of how bird flu is diagnosed, well, healthcare providers can diagnose bird flu with a throat or a nose swab or a swab from the conjunctiva of your eye. Now, current tests will detect highly pathogenic H5N1 bird flu as influenza A. Labs don't routinely test all positive influenza A swabs for bird flu, so you have to let your provider know that you've been in contact with birds, cows, or other animals that could be infected. Then, if the test is positive for influenza A, the lab will send it to a special lab to be tested for bird flu. In terms of treatment, well, if identified early, you can treat bird flu with antiviral medication. A provider might prescribe oseltamivir, paramivir, or zanimivir. Now, in terms of how you prevent bird flu, there are several things you can do to reduce your risk of bird flu. These include wearing protective clothing like gloves, a mask, and goggles when you're working with birds, wild animals, and livestock. You should also wash your hands frequently when handling birds, wild animals, and livestock, or after being in areas where they live. This includes if you've visited petting zoos, 
farms or areas with water features that geese or ducks frequent. It's also important not to work with animals who are sick or who've been exposed to avian influenza. And in case of an outbreak, follow public health guidelines to limit the spread. Now, another important point is to take your shoes off before going into your home if you've been in areas where birds like waterfowl or chickens live. This reduces the risk of spreading bird droppings or anything else that could be contaminated with the virus around your house. It's also important to not touch or drink unpasteurized milk and also try to get a seasonal flu shot. Now, this won't directly protect you from bird flu, but it can reduce your risk of serious illness and of getting both avian influenza and seasonal influenza at the same time. Now, public health authorities like the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the US or the CDC monitor cases of bird flu in animals and people to try and reduce the risk of spread. And scientists are also working to develop vaccines that could help prevent bird flu or at least reduce its severity. I've included some useful information in the description box of when you should see your health provider or when you should seek more urgent medical care as well as useful links and resources.